Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to take a material from polygon.com and apply it correctly in Unity. Okay, so this is the material that we're going to be using. It's a mirrored uh, tile material. I've already downloaded the textures to my computer, uh, used a resolution of 4K, um, and I chose all the maps. So we've got all the ones listed there um, have been downloaded. Before we move on though, I do want to take a look at the 3D preview and just take note of the way some of these tiles are really mirrored and some are not. Uh, we're going to be working uh, quite closely with the reflection and glossy textures, um, so that's something we want to make sure we get right. I've set up a small scene in Unity for us to work with. It's literally just a HDRR skybox with a directional light and whatnot, just the, the bare minimum to allow us to properly see our material. Um, I've also set up a camera nice and close to the plane, so if I click on the, the game window here, we're now just seeing a nice zoomed in image of that plane, so we can work on our material. So, let's create it to start with. Um, in the materials folder here that I've created, I'm going to hit the right mouse button, hit create, hit material, and then we'll call this Tiles Onyx. There we go, and then I'll drag that over to our wall object. Um, you can see the, the plane's now turned white, and if I click on the plane, which I've called wall, uh, you'll see our material is now listed at the bottom of the inspector. So the next step is to bring in the textures that we've downloaded. So, the ones we're going to need are the color texture, uh, the gloss, the 16-bit normals, uh, the 16-bit the display, uh, displacement, sorry, and the reflection map. So we'll drag those into our textures folder. Give Unity a minute to import them. So once the textures are in, we'll um, just go through their uh, values here in the inspector. I need to change a, a few things depending on what the texture does. Now the color one is the easiest. That literally all we're gonna do is change the resolution to 4K. We'll hit apply, there we go. And now we'll move to the next one, which is the displacement. Now for this one, we want to untick the sRGB color texture tick box there. Um, basically, it's any texture that's not uh, contributing to the color of the material should usually have that turned off. Um, it's to stop the uh, engine's color profile from messing with the values. We want the, the, the raw data from this. Uh, from this texture in our material. So we'll untick that, change this to 4K as well, and hit apply. We'll do the exact same for the normal. Nope, I, I do that every time. For the normal, in fact, you <laughs> click on the texture type, change it to normal, and then you'll notice it, it doesn't have the option to disable the, the color texture because it, it knows it's a normal map and it knows exactly what to do with it. So we'll hit apply on that. Um, and we're also going to do it on the reflection map. Now, as I'll explain in a minute, we won't really be using the reflection map, but I want to I want to uh, demonstrate something in a moment. So we'll do the same for that one, turn off the color texture and set it to 4K. Okay, so now we'll select our wall again. Uh, I'm just going to minimize some of this stuff because we don't need it. We just want to look at the material. Okay, so before taking our textures into the material, we do need to adjust the type of shader that we're using. Um, the best one to use for a dielectric material from polygon.com is the specular setup. If you're using a metallic uh, material, you would use the roughness one instead. For this case, we're gonna want the specular setup, uh, and that changes a few of the inputs that it's expecting. So, first of all, we'll drop in the textures that we can actually use at this point, which is the color one for a start. We'll drop that into the top place there, the albedo map, um, and that will give us our our color input that we can see here. Um, and if you need to, at this point, you can start uh, messing with the tiling um, to get the scaling correct, but I'm going to leave it at the default of 1. Next, we'll drop in our normal map to the normal map input. Then the displacement map will go into the height map. Now with the height map, we have a slider here to allow us to, to tweak a little bit. You'll notice as I do, the tiles appear to, to come out a little bit from the plane, which is exactly what we want. And it just gives that impression of it being actual geometry rather than just a flat texture. 
it looks pretty good so we'll leave that about there now the other main input that, that the shader is expecting is this specular input. Now we don't have a specific specular map, we do have a reflection map which is pretty much um, what it's asking for, but the data stored within the gloss map um, has nowhere to go. So just for the sake of demonstration I'm going to drop that reflection map into the specular map and we're, we're quite close to the sort of effect that we want. Um, the you can see some of the tiles are really mirrored like they should be, some aren't. Um, it's definitely passable um, it, with some of the materials. You could probably get away with just using that setup, uh, maybe adjusting the smoothness manually like so to get the sort of look that you want. Um, but on some materials you're really going to want the data that's sitting inside that gloss map. So. The way to do that, first of all, is we're going to remove the reflection map. There we go. So what we're going to do is take the gloss map and the reflection map and drop it into GIMP. And let me show you why. If I hover over the specular input there, a little tooltip will pop up. And it tells you what inputs that, uh, what it's looking for in that texture. So in this case, the specular map is going to be the RGB, the red, green, and blue channels, um, which is exactly really what our reflection map is doing. So that reflection map will essentially be the basis of our, of our specular map that we're going to make. And then the smoothness, which is pretty much identical to what a gloss map, it is identical to what a, a gloss map does, it's just a, a different term, um, it's expecting to be in the alpha channel. So that's what we need to do. We need to make a texture that has those two maps combined together in the way that Unity is expecting. Okay, so if we right mouse button on, say, the gloss map and hit show in Explorer, that will uh, show us the, the actual folder where all these textures are stored once they've been imported into Unity. You can see it's buried deep within my <laughs> with my file system there. Um, and then we've got all the maps that we've been working on. So we're gonna take the gloss map and the reflection map and we're going to send those to GIMP. So I'll do that now and then another one for the reflection map. There we go and then if I load up GIMP we can see both our textures are sitting in there. Now as I said the reflection map is going to be the basis of our texture that's that's already doing what it should be doing. Um, so if I hit colors, components and then decompose leave that as the default settings, RGB, decompose to layers. What it will do is take those channels and make them separate grayscale images. As you can see here, we've now got red, green, and blue. Um, so all we need to do now is get our gloss map and add it as an alpha layer, and then we can recompose that image. So I'll jump over to the gloss map, hit edit, and then copy. Jump back to our new texture, hit edit, paste as a new layer. Let's put it in the wrong place, so we'll just drag it down one. I'll rename that Alpha. And that's exactly what Unity is expecting now. The RGB channels are the, ref the, the specular map or reflection map, and the Alpha channel is our gloss map. So if I recompose this uh, image now, um, it's already selected RGBA instead of RGB, and actually put in all of those layers in exactly the right place. Uh, red, green, blue, and alpha all have the right textures in there. So we can just literally click OK, and it's recombined that image together, and it's now the, the specular map that Unity is expecting. So if I click on File, and then Export As, uh, find the Textures folder again, there we go. Um, if I click on any one of these, it will give us the right naming format, and then I can just change this part. Uh, I usually put in something like GIMP um, as a prefix just so I know that this is a texture that I've made rather than one that's been downloaded from Polygon and then we'll call it specular. Hit export and there we go. Now if I jump back to Unity you'll see that texture has already been added. Now all we need to do is what we've done in the past, turn off the uh, color texture. It is worth mentioning that in some instances, I, I'm, I'm not sure if any of the materials from Polygon uh, 
do this, but in, in some instances a specular um, map can have colour information in it, um, in which case you'd probably need to leave that on, but certainly in this case we'll be turning it off, changing this to 4K and hitting apply. Now if we go back to our wall, brings back the material into the inspector and then we can dr just drop the new map that we made into specular and now we have the reflection and gloss maps working in unity and the material is looking exactly the way it should. Now it does actually still give you a slider um, to adjust the gloss map. I don't know why it doesn't do that for for say the, the reflection map but hey. <laughs> um, but it, it's good, it, it gives you the ability just, just to tweak a little bit. I mean left at the, the value of 1 it will be an identical copy of the material that's on Polygon and we, and we can see that here, especially if I hit the uh, play button here. I've set up a small animation just so we can just so we can see the environment reacting with the material, and it's looking it's looking good. Um, but if you need to slightly tone down the smoothness, like so, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so in this video we've learnt how to download a material from Polygon.com, bring the textures into Unity, set up the textures properly, uh, create our own uh, specular map from the gloss and uh, reflection maps, uh, and then set up the material in Unity.